Now, natural language can have a lot of ambiguity, especially where quantificational terms are concerned. If you want an example of this, you can consider the ambiguous English sentence, every five minutes a Canadian has a heart attack. This sentence looks a little bit like our everybody loves somebody that we considered in an earlier video. Now, obviously, the intended meaning is that every five minutes, some Canadian or other has a heart attack. I don't know, by the way, whether this statistic is accurate. But there's another available reading, which is equally supported by the surface grammar, which is that every five minutes, some one specific Canadian is having a heart attack. And the way you can see this is by cancelability. So, for instance, you can say, every five minutes, a Canadian has a heart attack, and we need to do something to help her. That's perfectly fine. What it makes clear is that the scope is different. We're going to have a look at how quantificational scope works and how to disambiguate these kinds of sentences. For the sake of this video, I'd like to use a happier example than heart attacks and people getting mugged, which is the example from the textbook. So let's try something like the following. Every day, someone is saved from drowning. This lends itself to two possible readings. One is the more natural one that probably came to mind for you, which is everything is such that if it's a day, then some person is saved during that. But this English sentence is actually ambiguous and it can also give the following reading. And what this says is that there's some person who for every day is getting saved during that day. So it's being saved from drowning. So there's one particular person that's always being saved by a lifeguard or whatever on any given day. This bottom one is sometimes called the strong reading and the top one is sometimes called the weak reading. And notice that the strong reading actually implies the weak reading, but not the other way around. So how are you supposed to tell the difference between them when you encounter them in natural language? Well, sometimes you won't, but most of the time you just have to know what the speaker is talking about in order to get this translation going. And in most cases, that's pretty clear, as even it is in this case. If in natural language we wanted to say, distinguish the strong reading, we would add some phrase like someone in particular or some one specific person and then that would block off the availability of the weak reading and make it clear that we were talking about the strong. But the point is that although these sentences are ambiguous in natural languages like English, they're completely unambiguous in FOL. So we have to think very carefully about what the original is trying to say. And usually in order to tell what's being said, unless there are verbal cues, we'll have to look at context. And that's it for our introduction to multiple quantification, which means that's it for week 13. Um, so, as ever, let me know what you think, and I'll just wait to hear from you.